going on guys so i'm back again with another video applying some philosophy to modern day life and today i'm breaking down five life lessons from one of my favorite books and definitely one of my favorite philosophers good old aristotle and his nicomachean ethics this book is chock full of just kind of everything it was one of the earlier books i read getting into western philosophy and I definitely would recommend it to anyone getting into philosophy as like a beginner book, just because it really breaks down uh, a lot of things in a broad sense, from morality to justice uh, to happiness. And uh, that's going to be a little bit of what we're going to dive into today when it comes to um, the five lessons I learned. So grab yourself some coffee. I already finished mine, uh, unfortunately. And uh, let's dig into these lessons. So number one is you are your actions, not your words. And Aristotle describes this by stating, a state of character results from the repetition of similar actions. So essentially what he's talking about here is you aren't, you know, brave, fearless, kind, temperate, just because you state you are, right? You can't just go off and say you're something and you magically are. And also it doesn't just take one courageous act to make you brave, but rather it's kind of adopting these virtues in a holistic sense and applying them to your entire life. So, you know, repetitious actions that show your bravery, that live up to that virtue. Um, so it, it, it's more living in accordance with those virtues and developing a, a way of life that uh, becomes and, and includes those states of being rather than just, again, stating you are something uh, or hanging your hat off one singular action. At bottom, you're supposed to consistently live in accordance with these virtues, regardless of the adversity or desires you may face that want to sway you away from that virtue. Number two is a big point that Aristotle brings up, and that is virtue is a mean. And it, it kind of ties back to that whole Goldilocks story, right? Where the porridge is, you know, too warm or the porridge is too cold, and you want to find where it's just right. Where the same way is with these virtues that Aristotle describes, he kind of believes that too much or too little of anything is a bad thing, right? If you're too confident and too brash, um, it's going to lead to recklessness, right? But if you're too fearful, then you're going to kind of have that paralysis by analysis. You're going to uh, just have inactivity, right, in your life. Uh, the same way could be with food, right? Too little food could be anorexia. Too much food could be gluttony, uh, obesity, things like that. And so it's the same way with all these virtues, right? You kind of want to stay within this golden mean and avoid excess or deficiency of anything. He also ties us to the idea of knowing when to feel pain and when to feel pleasure. So, you know, a good example would be a workout, right? You have to go through some temporary suffering, some temporary pain of a difficult workout for the long-term health benefits. That's a good reason to feel some pain. But other times you obviously want to avoid pain and steer more towards pleasure. So it's, it's knowing when is the right and wrong scenario to express a virtue or to feel pain or pleasure. And it can't be dictated off, you know, desire of the moment or your emotions. But Aristotle believes that it should be dictated off reason, understanding, you know, knowing properly w when is rationally the right time to act in this way or to feel this way or make this decision. Lesson number three is you must love yourself in order to love others. It's kind of like that old adage, right? How you can't pour from an empty cup. So Aristotle describes how, you know, true self-love is not just wishing for goodness in your life. You can't just hope good things happen and, you know, accept how you are and it is what it is. No, he thinks that true self-love requires you acting and, and taking the necessary actions to actually achieve goodness in your life. So we actually have to work for, you know, self-worth and work to improve our value. And by increasing our own personal value, by becoming stronger, uh, healthier, smarter, more valuable to others, we are more valuable in our relationships and our families, um, in situations we engage with, uh, we increase our value to ourselves and to others. So, you know, it ends up being a kind of requisite uh, function to love yourself so that you can actually be more valuable to others in the long run. Because if you're only looking to others to provide you with value, to provide you with love, uh, that's more of a parasitic relationship and it's kind of bound to dissolve or, or bound to create some imbalance in the friendship and uh, it, it's just not going to work out for you. Lesson number four is one of my favorites, and that is less is more. And I really love how Aristotle describes this and, and kind of beautifully explains it in this sentence. A few friends for pleasure are enough also, just as a little seasoning on food is enough. So just like you don't want too much salt on your food, 
you don't want too many friends in your life. You want friends based out of character is what Aristotle goes on to describe. You don't want these kind of short-term uh, friendships that are based off pleasure or utility. What can you do for me? What is your use to me at this exact moment? Those are typically more emotionally you know, derived friendships, and they're also quicker to dissolve and to deteriorate. Aristotle points out that friendships that are based in character are a lot more stable, a lot more enduring, because those are friendships and relationships that are based in shared beliefs, shared values, shared interests. It's not to say that someone always agrees with you, but that they share your core kind of virtues, how you see the world for the most part. And when they do challenge you in an argument, it's from a productive manner. It, you know, it's, in a, it's a place that's going to make you have more adequate ideas, challenge you in a, in, in a good productive way, like I said, and, and lead you to become more virtuous and a more complete human being. It's not from a place of attack uh, or you know, indecency. It's from a place of love. And when you do have those friendships that, you know, you can really resonate with a person, have valuable uh, interactions with a person, valuable conversations, uh, Aristotle points out that you begin to love them almost like an extension of yourself. You love them as you love yourself. And those are the friendships that you want to keep around, and they are going to be few and far between, so less is more. And number five is live for virtue, not amusement. Aristotle states, but the happy life seems to be a life in accord with virtue, which is a life involving serious actions and not consistent in amusement. So basically what he's talking about here is amusement, relaxation, vacation. Those are short-term pleasures. They, they are, are fun and enjoyable in the moment, but that's not complete happiness. That's short-term happiness. That's fleeting, right? And he, he points out and, and elaborates more that where we find complete happiness, fulfillment of our, of our soul and, and, and of our mind and body is through meaningful, noble work. You know, it's, it's pursuing our passions. It's living in an intentional life, being purposeful and, and trying to express our virtues and our ideas and imprinting them on the world. You know, it's maximizing our potential, seeing our self-worth actualized into the world. So, you know, it's not just working to eventually have these kind of short-term gratifications, you know, of like a vacation, buying a new car, whatever. That's not long-term happiness, right? You know, people describe material goods aren't long-term happiness. They aren't real happiness. And that's true because real happiness is going to come through, you know, meaningful work, stuff that you really feel prideful about that really aids to your self-worth. It's work that you're excited to do, excited to perform and, and share with others. So to wrap up these five lessons in a more coherent couple of sentences, Aristotle believes we need to act rationally and live in accordance with our virtues not let emotions uh, or our desires kind of deviate our actions and, and and be quite misleading in our lives we need to rely on reason understanding and what we know to be virtuous and virtue relies in a mean it's not too much excess or deficiency which both can lead you in the wrong direction we need to be kind of content in this balance, right? We need to find peace in this kind of middle ground. And it's through understanding our virtues and, and thinking rationally and thinking prudently that we can find others that share our character, that share our values and our interests. And those are the people we want to build meaningful, long lasting relationships with. Those are gonna be sustainable friendships that last a lifetime, that are uh, fulfilling, engaging, and uh, lead to us becoming a better human being. So overall, hopefully you guys learned something from this video and got something from Aristotle's work. Again, if you want to expand a lot more into these concepts and these ideas, I highly recommend picking up the Nicomachean Ethics from Aristotle. Uh, it's a phenomenal work and it'll describe everything a lot better than I did. But if you guys did enjoy this, please follow uh, the podcast, like this video if you are watching on YouTube. And if you guys are looking for a longer form written piece, I do have a post written up on my Substack. You can check that out. It'll be linked in the show notes or the description. I appreciate you guys' support, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.